State Beavers come calling on the Cal Bears here in Berkeley. Two teams with high hopes of an NCAA berth. And the winner tonight, certainly with a leg up. Barry Tompkins with Dan Belwamini back at Harmon Arena, which still tickles me. This was Harmon Gym until two years ago, and two years before that, it was Room 100. <laughs> Let's take a look at the officials in this ball game. And they're a veteran Pac-10 Conference crew. Tom Harrington will be the referee. Bob Sidoff and Terry Crispin will be the umpire. And this is no box of chocolates for the officials either. The crowd right on top of you, as you see, the series record 46 and 42 with California, the slight edge, but Oregon State and Ralph Miller have won the last two. And you will see two outstanding players in this ballgame. Leonard Taylor, 44 in a white jersey for California, and Gary Payton, number 20, in the orange of the Oregon State Beavers. Two quality college players. And really, Peyton has really taken the play away from a lot of the other guards around. And you have to look at him as the premier guard on the West Coast. He's done an outstanding job, and he's just had a big, big junior year. There's Fisher steps into the lane, leans in nicely with a right hand. Roy Fisher played with a lot of confidence now. He's been averaging over 17 points a game for the last three or four games. Well, the game plan for California is get it inside and try to score, pound it around the basket, and they were able to do that on the first wing. Now, California is going to show a little zone. The Bears will switch up defensively. Peyton under pressure, give it up to Brantley on the baseline, put up for the jumper, and has it. You got to play a little bit better defense on that zone. I'm sure Luke Campanelli can't be happy with that, and they cause a turnover. Oregon State can do that. They go full court press after the score, turnover, California, ball out of bounds. That's what the Beavers have to do if they're going to win this game. And the Beavers will take it out right under the basket. You made a point when we were chatting before the game that you feel for Oregon State to have a little legitimate chance to win this game here in Berkeley, that they would have to force between 20 and 25 turnovers. Now, I was leaning more to 25 or more. I, I really think if the Beavers are going to win this game, they, because they're outmanned around the basket, Barry, they're just a real small team, and they're out-rebounded by 12 or 13 a game. They're going to have to make a lot of those. And Eric Knox can shoot those, and he's a streak shooter, so note, he makes the first three-pointer. Back in the trap, back in the full-court press. State does do an interesting thing, something to watch for on the offensive end. Here's the pass ahead for Taylor. Turnover. Taylor just couldn't handle that one. You can't really say Oregon State forced it. But I started to say one thing that Oregon State does do is they will penetrate a great deal, but they don't often take it all the way to the basket. They'll penetrate and then kick it back out or run the baseline. Yeah, especially against the zone. You'll see them go to the basket and then go ahead and move it out. Now California looks like they switched it up and go a little man-to-man. -man. There's the penetration, making a liar on him. I mean, Knox pulled up for the jumper in the lane, and the foul is drawn. And that. Eric Knox makes his first shot. We're going to try it again. Takes it inside, but McIntosh on the baseline gets it blocked by Taylor, and they get Taylor for the foul. And McIntosh will go to the free throw line. And Taylor, who has not been prone to foul trouble. Every time they score, as you see the free throw percentage of McIntosh, good, of course, good field goal percentage shooter. Most of his scores are around, around the hoop. But every time they score, it gives them that added advantage to go into the press. They bring Alabegovic all the way back to half court. So they're all set up and ready to go. Their guards are out in front. They're not really looking offensive rebound. They're just looking to get into the press. Got your second try too high, but coming across the lane nicely for the rebound is Brantley. Oregon State doing it all right so far. Not looking at offensive rebound, but they just get one. A guard kind of pops right in there and gets it. There's it. Just had one shot. That's Alabegovic. A little bit short, and Taylor has the rebound for California. Ahead to Fisher, and he can't hang on. Three quick turnovers for the Bears. California just trying to take advantage of people ahead of them, and they haven't been able to make the simple pass. I think Luke Campanelli's just got to settle his club down. They've got to get a little confidence that once they break the press, they've got a chance to score on it. Brantley gives it up now for Peyton. Cross court to Knox. They jump out on Knox. They're not going to give him that three-point shot. Peyton will take it. Off the right side. Won't go, but there for the rebound again is Brantley nicely, but he's on the baseline. It'll be the Bears' ball. I always felt the zone was really a, it's not a very strong rebounding kind of defense because you just don't have man-to-man -man responsibility. That time, Brantley just ran a baseline and picked it off. California couldn't screw him out. Pressure again, and the trap almost worked. Now it does work. Here's Knox ahead underneath to Payton. Gives it up nicely to Brantley for the jumper. 
Did everything right except get it down. Knocked out of bounds. No, it wasn't out of bounds. California controls it. And look at this. They stay right in the press after the miss. What a pass by Payton, though. Made a good acrobatic pass. Oregon State just couldn't get it down. Now, this is only really the second time California's been down the floor, and they score. Taylor. That's what the Bears need to do. Well, they're two out of two in the half court, and about 0 for 5 in the open court. There's Gary Payton. They'll take their time. Very patient team, the Oregon State Beavers. And that, of course, a keynote of any Ralph Miller coach team. Yeah, Ralph Miller's teams are not going to go too quick as Taylor picks up his second personal foul. Alavegovich that time in the middle. See if Luke Campanelli looks like he's going to stay with him. I thought he might maybe take Taylor out. He's still almost 17 minutes to go in the first half. Very much a key for Oregon State if they could get Leonard Taylor in foul trouble. And they might look to do that the next time down the floor. Even if they're in a zone, you can still penetrate the ball and try to take it to where Taylor is. That is a second foul. Uh, we make one correction here. The foul was called on Keith Smith, not on Taylor. Okay, then that's not a second foul. Just the first foul. foul. That's right. All right. Here's Ryan Drew. Ryan Drew gets in the lane, gives it up nicely to Taylor, but Taylor again unable to handle it. Now Fisher back for Beezer. California passing a little bit errantly early in this ball game. Well, the quickness of Oregon State is evident. I mean, it seems like every pass is a difficult one because the Beavers get in that passing lane and all of a sudden attack you and try to force a turnover. Now, the other thing, there's another one. McIntosh this time. Two on nobody. McIntosh to the basket, a little short, painting the follow. Payton liked that. <laughs> he liked that tip. What I started to say about Gary Payton, and again, this is something to watch, he really will nonchalant you defensively. It looked like he's not paying any attention at all, but I'll tell you, for a college player, he understands the passing lanes as well as anybody I've ever seen. You saw that graphic, Barry, that, that five turnovers already by the Bears, but all of Oregon State's players understand that passing lane. I mean, they just, there's was a good jumper on the baseline, but they all like to lull you to sleep and then go for it. Keith Smith with the jumper behind a screen by Ryan Drew. This is Alabegovich. He likes to play away from the basket. Peyton gives it up for Knox. Now back to Peyton, and there's a turnover for the Beavers. And we got a timeout on the floor. 15-29 remaining first half. Oregon State leads it 10 to 6. We'll be back to Berkeley right after this. Hi, I'm Joe Theismann, and no matter what stadium I'd broadcast from, I would always have to find the closest bathroom, just in case I had that sudden urge to go. My prostate was giving me fits. But then I heard about Super Beta Prostate's nationwide million bottle giveaway, and I got a free bottle. What a difference it made. I don't have to go as often, and I don't have to get up at night as much. Now I wake up refreshed and ready to tackle anything. Super Beta Prostate has sold over 5 million bottles because 50% of men over 50 and 80% of men over 80 have prostate issues. Chances are you need Super Beta Prostate to keep you healthy too. What's so special about Super Beta Prostate? is that it's the most widely used supplement supporting a healthy prostate. It has a trusted 10-year history, and it's all natural, made from a scientific breakthrough plant sterol called beta cytosterol. You have to take 100 saw palmetto capsules to get the same amount of beta cytosterol as you would from just one super beta prostate tablet. If you want a stronger urine flow and a more complete emptying of your bladder, I recommend Super Beta Prostate. Super Beta Prostate works. I couldn't sleep through the night. I found the Super Beta Prostate, which was announced over the radio. I got a free bottle, and now I'm sleeping all the way through the night. I am really happy. I sleep through the night. I don't have any sudden urges to go to the bathroom. Now I sleep through the night. I wake up completely energized, and my days are just great because of this product. There's no reason to accept the issues that come with an aging prostate. So get Super Beta Prostate today. It works for me both during the day and at night. My wife and I sleep a whole lot better, and we wake up feeling more refreshed and younger. Call now, and we'll send every new customer a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate. Just pay shipping and handling. Give Super Beta Prostate a try for free. Call 800-506-3612. 800-506-3612. A star is born. The NBA Sunday Showcase on ABC. 
running down a dream. Turning skeptics into believers. That fires up the crowd. Part man, part miracle. The magic of Jeremy Lin continues here at Madison Square Garden. Gotham's newest superhero takes the stage to further the legend of Lin. Coverage of Maverick's Knicks begins at 12.30 Eastern. Then Magic Heat at 3.30 Sunday on ABC. Well, Dan, the Bears making the most of the few chances they're getting. Every time they've been in a half court, Barry, they've scored. They've just turned the ball over five times, and Oregon State, as a result of that, has had many more shot attempts. And leads by four. Four and a half minutes into this one. Beezer to inbound for California. Well, so Taylor. McIntosh jumps out on him. Both teams saying that the same, the same lineup that they had. Each of these teams, about seven players, possibly eight players deep. Here's Ryan Drew. He can shoot the three-pointer, too. And a foul is going to be called on Knox, reaching in on Beezer. Well, they do anticipate and go for every steal. They try to disrupt you in the half court, get a quick turnover. And I really think if California has the patience and they can execute their half court offense, they're going to get a lot of great shots. Keith Smith outside. Now Ryan Drew. Beezer. Taylor away from the basket. The last time they were man to man, Barry, of course, from the out of bounds. Now they go zone. California needs to recognize, run their offense. They're still going to block. Back door nicely for Fisher from Keith Smith. Perfect pass, well executed. California noted to do that against zones. Couldn't do it any better than that. That's Alabegovich on the baseline. Cut off nicely by Beezer. And a foul on Alabegovich. So there is a case of verticality where Beezer held his ground and Alabegovich had no choice but to jump into him. Look at this alley hoop again. Well, perfect pass. The pass was there. Fisher ran the baseline against the zone. It's non defensible when you can do that. Down the road in Palo Alto, Stanford with a 16 point lead in the second half against Oregon. Now they're going to try to go man-to-man. -man. Forget the zone because you don't even see those lobs too often. Nice pass to Fisher from Beezer for the basket. Fisher with six quick ones for the Bears. We're tied at 10. I really don't think Oregon State can play. They're trying to play up on the side defensively, and California's been going over the top. Uh, I think look for Oregon State to change that, maybe play a little bit more behind. Payton back for Knox. Thinks about the three-pointer, doesn't take it, but Gary Payton will off the right side and no good. So Payton 0 for 2 from three-point land. Keith Smith now for the Bears as they go into their half-court offense. Ryan Drew for Smith. Now Fisher. The Drew real battle going on inside between McIntosh and Taylor. McIntosh trying to front Taylor, but Fisher gets the ball, takes it to the basket, no problem. Eight for him, and he's having his own way there. It's almost too easy inside. California is able to make that entry pass, and Oregon State's trying to fight him so much and play in front. They're getting caught on the side, and California's turned it into about four or five easy baskets. That's Brantley underneath the McIntosh double team turnover. Taylor takes it away from him to Keith Smith. Now the Bears will run. Smith burns it across the timeline, gives it up underneath to Beezer. Foul called before the shot, I think. That'll be Alabegovic, his second foul. And Peyton does a nice job of cutting the cutting Smith off, but look at Beezer posting up. California putting on a clinic on how to post up on the offense and get the ball and turn it into scores. Ryan Walton has come on replacing Ryan Drew for the Bears. Walton, another streak shooter. Very much like Knox for Oregon State. And you thought Knox was really going to get it going because he made his first shot. Now a turnover. Credit that to Peyton. He got a hand on the inbounds pass. Got a man in the air, put it off the glass and in. But Peyton wasn't happy with getting the deuce. He was going for a three-point play that time. Again, the trap, but Beezer gets it across the timeline. When the Bears get in their half-court offense, they are effective, but they have been having a little bit of trouble just getting it across the timeline. It's the only thing that's kept Oregon State in the game. 
Oh, Beezer all alone on the baseline. Bears missed him that time. Here's Walton back for Smith. I don't think Alabegovich is sure if they're zone or man to man. Now, now he's set. Brian Walton takes the jumper in front of Knox. Rebound comes down to Knox. Well, Barry, Barry, that's the shot that they want California to take, that long-range jumper. Nice pass from Knox to Alabegovich. Easy off the glass. He almost threw it and hit the rim that time. Taylor almost hit it. Fisher gets it across the timeline for the Bears. Thinks about taking it to the basket, but doesn't. Now back to Beezer. And we talked about contrasting styles at the beginning of this game, and that's exactly what we're seeing so far. Yeah, you're seeing California trying to get it right there, and they've been very successful. And Oregon State trying to disrupt the game. So both teams are really doing what they have to do to stay in it. That's a good no call. Here's Brantley to the baseline. Nicely knocked away by Leonard Taylor. Don't bring that stuff in here. Brantley on the baseline. Here comes Taylor for the help. Ooh. And we got a timeout. 11.25 remaining first half. Good game. We're tied at 14. We'll be back right after this. Rated T for team. Download now and play for free at tank.tm. Hey, man, you really think I had a chance to win this thing or what? Dude, you invented three catchphrases. Get some toast because here comes the jam. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, everybody, we have a little announcement to make today. The Employee of the Month Award goes to our very own Doris. She does make a mean, sloppy joke. I mean, how hard is that? You deserve the best in entertainment at the best value. AT&T Uverse brings you all of this and more through innovative product features like the wireless receiver, a dynamic all-screen experience, exclusive interactive applications, and exceptional customer service. AT&T Uverse is TV like you've never seen before. He was a 21st century global nomad. Home was an airport lounge and an iPad. Made sure his credit score did not go bad with a freecreditscore.com app that he had. Downloaded it in the Himalayas while meditating like a true player. Now when he's surfing down in Chilea, he can see when his score is in danger. If you're a mobile type on the go, I suggest you take a tip from my bro. You download the app that lets you know at freecreditscore.com. Offer applies with enrollment at freecreditscore.com. 14 with 11.25 remaining. Statistics don't always really tell the story, Dan, but I think in this game they do. Cal shooting the lights out, and still they're tied. Yeah, California buries 7 out of 8, which is unbelievable, and tied. Of course, they've made a lot of turnovers, and when you give the ball to the other team, you turn the ball over, it's just like a, you know, you miss a shot, and the other guys go down and score, and Oregon State's been able to do that. And the other thing that's interesting is Oregon State, which has been out-rebounded by 13 a game, is leading California in the rebounding department, 6-3. Brantley outside, no good in the rebound. Walton. Ahead it goes to Taylor and a foul called on McIntosh. McIntosh did everything he could, he could, but that wasn't much. Well, McIntosh is about two or three inches smaller than Taylor, and he's guarding him and he's trying to establish position and just jump in front. He's doing a smart thing. They're gonna say that was before the shot attempt. Well, that one is subject, I think, to debate. To review. Yes, yes, that's right. Review that one. Send this up to the booth. Taylor outside. Open jump for Smith. Too hard. Rebound comes down to Knox. Now the Beavers will run. Here's Brantley. To Knox. Loves that shot. But it's short. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back underneath nicely to McIntosh. Leave it for Brantley. And he's got it. Very good ball movement for the Beavers. Good passing by Oregon State that time. Knox trying to go on a penetration. Penetrate and kick it off. It was very 
successful now back in their press. And ahead it goes to Hart Ortman. Nice pass to Taylor. Good night. Well, when you break the press, if you can go to the basket and score, it's going to take a lot of the effectiveness of the press out of Oregon State. And that's what they're going to have to do because the Beavers will not be, uh, they won't be looking to press as much if you keep scoring. Tied for the fifth time in this first half, just halfway through the first half. Peyton leaves it for Martin to take the jumper and got it. Earl Martin with his first two. Martin was a starter until just a few games ago. And Ralph Miller decided he could be more effective coming off the bench, and that's the role he will serve. He will play a lot of minutes. This is Keith Smith. Smith, Smith tries to get around Knox. Can't do it now. Hart Ortman. Ortman a wide body in there. Takes up a lot of room. Not a great shooter, but it worked the boards pretty good. Shot that one pretty well, too. At the other end, the Beavers right back. Brantley too soft off the glass. Offensive foul. Smart play that time by Beezer. Just a step in front. Brantley on a quick transition. Beezer, perfect position in there. Good call. Fisher comes back for uh, California. It gives Beezer a break. And Alabegovic comes back for Oregon State, replacing McIntosh, who will sit down. There's a pass for Ortman, who runs it down at the baseline. Gives it back now for Walton. Now to Pete Smith. Now the Bears will play half court. Not a bad way to break the press. Just throw a length of the court. Pete Smith. Worked on by Gary Payton. Now for Fisher. Smith has turned out to be a very good quarterback for this California team. And a foul is going to be called away from the ball, actually. I'm not sure who they call that on. I, I think it was on Peyton. I think they're going to call Peyton with a grab. Smith was trying to move to his left, and Peyton bumped him a little bit. Still a non-shooting situation. Ryan Drew is going to come in the game for California. Good long-range shooter. Ryan was in a slump earlier in the year. Credit to you, Barry, for getting him out of that slump. So yeah, Tom can tell right. me with my shot. Right. The last game I played, I scored a lot. Smith will come out. He's a good shooter. If he gets it going, he can make a lot of three-pointers. He really is. He really has his confidence back, too. There's Fisher underneath. Nice pass to Taylor. Alabegovic tries to do everything he can. Taylor gets it over him and in. Well, we thought Taylor and Fisher would have to have big games. Both have eight. They got 16 of California's 20 points. Have come from inside. Well, so far this game has been exactly as advertised. Here's Peyton back for Knox. Gary Peyton again, now Knox. Alabegovic outside. Brantley. Alabegovic, one of the better shooters on this team. Knox again. Still 17 seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Peyton takes a three pointer. Won't go. He's 0 for 3. Ryan Walton now tries to get it into Ortman and a nice save beautifully by Martin to Knox. Here come the Beavers, three on three to Alabegovic. Pulls up, too short. And a foul called on Ortman. Check that. I think they're going to call a foul on Knox. And Ralph Miller looks on and says, what are you going to do? We'll be back right after this. Up. You're snoring. It's really bad tonight. You need to go to the couch. Are you sick of being kicked out of your bedroom because you snore? Fed up with having to sleep on the couch every night? Then you need Pure Sleep, the number one selling snoring solution in the world. The first night he stopped snoring. The second night it worked, and the third night, and the fourth night, and I was about in tears because I was, it worked. Invented by a dentist who snored, Pure Sleep is FDA cleared and proven safe and effective. Here's how Pure Sleep works to stop snoring. During sleep, the muscles that keep the airway open relax, restricting airflow and creating a snoring sound. 
your sleep is a comfortable, self-molded mouthpiece that holds your jaw slightly forward, opening the airway so that the snoring stops. Just look at these CT scans of a person who snores. Here you can see the constricted airway. Now look how Pure Sleep opens that airway to stop the snoring. Pure Sleep started working the very first night. It's small, it's comfortable. You don't even know you have it in. Don't be fooled by imitators that can't be adjusted. Made in the USA, only Pure Sleep has three adjustable positions. Plus, Pure Sleep custom molds to your teeth for a perfect fit. Pure Sleep is guaranteed to stop your snoring right away. To prove it, we'll let you try it for 30 days before you buy it. All you do is cover the shipping and handling. Plus, for a limited time, we'll give you a second Pure Sleep with Travel Case at no additional cost. So act now. It was just like our lives changed overnight. We don't have the Pure Sleep. He's on the couch. So don't let snoring get you kicked to the couch. Kick snoring out of your bedroom with Pure Sleep. Call or visit TryPureSleep.com right now. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? Four in a row, baby. Great job, buddy. Great job. He's won the nationwide season opener four times here, but that was then. Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. Barry Tompkins with Dan Balwamini, 20 to 18 ball game, still 7.48 remaining in the half, and the Bears continue to shoot it, Dan, extremely well. Well, they're putting up big numbers. They're getting the ball inside, Barry, and they've been 10 out of 12, which isn't bad at 83, and Oregon State only at 37, yet Oregon State only trailing by a couple of points because of their tenacious defense and their ability to cause turnovers. Bears have cut the Beavers' rebounding edge to one. Here's Brian Walton now, gets it across the timeline. Gary Payton shadows him. Is he on you? I mean, Payton, you got to be careful when he gets up on you. And he's not really had a very good game so far offensively. No, not but, shooting well. No, but he can get it going. He can put points up in a hurry. Leonard Taylor, speaking of putting points up in a hurry. He's got 10. Ooh, they had Martin behind the defense that time, and they missed him. 24 on the baseline was open. Peyton, three-pointer, too hard. He is 0 for 4 from out there, and usually a much better shooter than that. Gary Payton is now playing before the home crowd, in a manner of speaking. He is from Oakland, just down the road. His whole family is here, sitting right behind the Oregon State bench. There's another turnover. Brantley, he'll take it all away. Oh, they're lightning quick. And you just can't make a guard-to-forward pass nonchalantly because Oregon State will steal it. That is the eighth turnover forced by the Oregon State Beavers. Most of them have been forced. And they turned into easy scores. I mean, when you make that kind of a steal there, forget it. And almost another, oh. and in fact, there is another. Here comes Martin to the basket. Oh, two shots. Two shots. Count it. Lou Campanelli's upset. He is very upset. One shot will go, so a try for three-point play. They're not calling that intentional. Oh, I thought they might. There's the steal. Well, Ortman dropped it the first time, and then the second. Drew did grab it. Yes, it did. Yeah, you could have really made a case for an intentional there. In fact, Ralph Miller up off the bench. As you look at Luke Campanelli, Ralph Miller wants an intentional foul. Marvelous steal there. They just stay at you, try to pick you. I mean, they don't have a big team on the floor. I mean, these guys are like six. There's Martin about six four and a half. Brantley six four. Peyton six three. Cross 6'6, six, six. Alabegovich is what 6'8, but a freshman, very thin. Who likes to play with the basket, yeah, so he doesn't play 6'8. No, he's an outside guy. <laughs> Bigger than the team he had last year, though. Yeah, that's last right. Year, he was 6'5 at the post. And again, you can see that trap just bothers California, but once they beat it, they can take it to the basket. And that's what happened there. That time was Smith.
Begovic outside, left hands it up, a little bit short. Rebound easy, comes down to Fisher. And traveling on Fisher, that's a tough call. That is a very tough call. I guess it's a call you got to make, but it's a tough call. Yeah, Lou Campanelli, just, Lou Campanelli didn't like the call, but if you don't call a foul and the player has the ball and goes down, now right here, you, if you're not going to call this a foul by, by McIntosh, now that's not a foul. Never it, touched him. Yeah, so what, what happens now? Move the pivot foot. Yeah, you got to have to call it. Long inbounds pass back to Brantley. Alabegovic. Now Brantley outside. Whistle blows. Foul away from the ball. And I don't think it's a foul, actually. I just think someone is throwing something on the court here. And that's one thing you do not need to do is, is throw things on the floor. Saw that the other night in the game at Vanderbilt that wound up costing Vandy the basketball game. Deja vu here at Berkeley. Remember this place, too, being one of the older arenas, the crowd is right on top of the floor. Here's Gary Payton. Cross court nicely to Martin. Pump fake, travel. And Luke Campanelli will hurry Leonard Taylor back in the ballgame after a short breather. Scott Haskin has come on number 43 for Oregon State. Hart Ortman leaves for California, replaced by Taylor. Haskin, the biggest of the Oregon State Beavers at 6'11". Just a freshman, though, still very raw. And Haskin was a guy that really Ralph Miller wanted to redshirt, uh, Barry, but decided that they needed him. Now, they didn't want to play him this year at all, but he's contributed and done a good job. And said, uh, you know, we need you in the game, buddy. Ryan Drew worked on very close to Taylor outside, knocks it down. Twelve for Leonard Taylor here in the first half. California going to stay in his own. Peyton has not hit anything outside. But he can light it up in a hurry. And Smith is still respecting Peyton. He's staying with him. Alabegovic is not bashful. Tony, he gets the ball yeah, up there. I mean, oh, yeah. Any place, he's going to look for it. Foul is called on Matt Beezer. And that will send Teo Alabegovic to the free throw line. That's probably a foul that Luke Campanelli would just soon not see. There is the mentor and the mentee. The brain trust. I tell you, that man has been around this game. I don't want to say he's been around the game a long time. His first guard was Methuselah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He says the game has not changed a whole lot. He says the players are more talented. Ryan Drew, three-pointer, got it. Drew is a streak shooter, and look out when Ron Drew gets the hot hand. And I think Drew's got to look for that shot to help this team. I mean, that's his strength. Well, and that's how Beasley knocks it away from Montevegovic. California, interestingly enough, Dan, has not been at the free throw line yet. Yeah, you know, Barry, they've got the ball near the basket, but they scored. They haven't been fouled because most of them, they just turned in. They haven't really been guarded because they've thrown it over the top. Gary Payton, cross court to Martin, underneath to Brantley. Nice pass, but Brantley couldn't get the ball down. And here come the Bears. Smith. Taylor. Fisher with Alabegovich on him. Back for Drew. Now Smith. Now start it all over again. Bears by four, 345 remaining in the half. Fisher had the shot, didn't take it. Taylor will, 14 for him. Oh, Taylor's really shooting the ball tonight. He's got a lot of confidence. Looks like he feels everyone's going. Oh, there's a foul. Everyone is going. Yeah. It's seven of seven. Okay, <laughs> I didn't think he missed any. <laughs> and Ralph Miller. Looking on as he has so many times. He always looks chagrined. Even if his team is winning, he looks chagrined. In fact, he defines the word chagrin. 329 remaining. First half. Bears, their biggest lead. They lead by six. We'll be back. 
There's a new breakthrough for men experiencing hair loss. Introducing the new Extreme Laser Comb from Hair Club. It's quick, easy, and affordable. And the Extreme Laser Comb is revolutionary. Here's how it works. DHT forms around the hair follicle, which shortens the lifespan of your hair. The Extreme Laser Comb combats hair loss, causing the hair follicle to grow thicker, stronger hair. This new technology is FDA cleared and clinically proven to work in 93% of candidates. Call now for more information and get this free info kit mailed to you in a discreet envelope. Hair Club is the largest hair restoration provider offering all proven hair loss solutions, non-surgical biomatrix process, hair transplants, hair therapies, and now the extreme laser comb. Hair Club is not about one tool. It's about all proven hair loss solutions. What separates us from all the other hair loss companies is that only Hair Club provides all the proven technologies and solutions for hair loss that are available. Imagine looking in the mirror and turning back time with more hair. Call now to see if you're a candidate. Call this number to get more information on the Extreme Laser Comb and all other proven options to get your hair back. Just look at these amazing results from Hair Club's many proven options. I found myself wearing hats all the time. And if someone out there has that same feeling, they need to go call Hair Club right now because it's changed my life completely. I'm very excited about my hair. He was a good looking guy before, but with his hair now, it's just this newfound confidence and there's a glow about him you just can't match. Hair Club provides customized hair loss solutions based on your age and type of hair loss. With locations nationwide, there's a hair club center near you. What's important is how you feel about yourself and how you look. And if you want to look better, if you want to feel better about yourself, Hair Club is the way to go. I'd look in the back and I'd start seeing thinning and then it just kept falling out. Getting my hair back was the best thing that ever happened to me. Call for a free hair analysis and you could have more hair in as little as four weeks. Hair Club, America's hair loss expert since 1976. Call now for your free info kit and free hair analysis. Hey man, you really think I had a chance to win this thing or what? Dude, you invented three catchphrases. Get some toast because here comes the jam. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, everybody, we have a little announcement to make today. The Employee of the Month Award goes to our very own Doris. She does make a mean, sloppy joke. I mean, how hard is that? We talked about the fact that California had to get the ball inside, and certainly they have done that. I think the surprising number there really is that Oregon State has done it also. Yeah, that's the one that stands out. But uh, some of those baskets for Oregon State, though, have been steals, and they've got enough transition and were able to go ahead and lay the ball in. And of course, Ralph Miller with that timeout. And you know, one thing we alluded to before, Barry, he, you know, he told me he said the game has not changed since 1932. I said, is that right? <laughs> is it, you know, because teams were pressed. Says there were presses and other things then. You just. I go, oh, yeah? I mean, it's about 1932 now. That's true. Well, I guess they still filled the ball with air then. Here's Gary Payton for Brantley. Bears, incidentally, continuing to shoot it with a hot hand, to say the least. 88%, 15 of 17. You'd think that if you were shooting 88%, your opponent was shooting 36%. Now, less than that, you might have more than a six point lead. But that is not the case. And Alabegovich reaches in and has the foul. Coming up at halftime, John Sanders will bring you up to date on scores and highlights from all around the country. Big upset today. Number one, Illinois, beat by Minnesota. Minnesota starting to get it going. Clem Haskett's team doing real well. They, was, they were really up for that one. Of course, Kendall Gill not playing for uh, Illinois. He's got to hurt him a little bit, but still a terrific win for the Gophers. They've had a couple of them. Yes, they have. Beat Iowa. Taylor knocks it down 15 for Leonard Taylor. That's the first free throw that California has attempted in this ballgame. Of course, Taylor going through a lot of injuries. Did not play last year. And coming back with a superb senior season. I mean, he's really done a good job for California. They're going to miss him when he's not around. Brantley for Payton. We think the Beavers got to get a score on the board. They've been able to get it inside. Alabegovich has missed two or three. Brantley missed one. Time for Gary Payton to start scoring. He's only had four. You can't ask him to do everything, but he's really had a subpar first half offensively. And remember, he's coming off the game in which he scored 41. Payton has confined himself to the perimeter, too. And that time, the ball off the hands of Martin. Eric Knox will come back 
for Oregon State. He's going to replace Alabegovic. So the Beavers will go back to a small lineup. Going to try to utilize their quickness. Bears in the midst of a seven to nothing run. And enjoying what is right now the largest lead they've had all night. There's Ryan Drew, three pointer, a little short. Ball kept alive by Martin, almost knocked back in the basket by Martin. Very, where has Knox been after that? You hit the first three point shot of the game, and we felt that when Knox gets 10 or more points, number 15 there, then Oregon State usually wins a fair share of their games. They need guard production. Both of these guards need to start filling it up a little bit. And Knox does it. That is a two pointer. Ahead at the other end. Nice lead from Smith to, to Drew to Smith. This is just a correction in the, on the scoreboard by Tom Harrington. They only backed up one point. Either that or they corrected and said that the shot by Eric Knox was a two-point shot, not a three-point. Yeah, and it was. That's and he, Tom Harrington did signal that, and that's exactly right. Here's a three-point try by Knox, and he knocks it down. Yeah, said, well, I think you woke him up. Right. Maybe got him going a little bit. Well, they need him. They need Knox to score. And Knox with eight. And the Beavers back within five. Taylor underneath, hammered. Oregon State trying to defend. But just late getting it, Leonard Taylor. Once Taylor gets the ball two or three feet from the basket, so things are going to happen. Yes, I mean, he's either going to get fouled or he's going to get a bucket. They either need to put more pressure on the ball or go ahead and drop one of the wings off and play front and back and, and, and hope California misses some outside shots. Well, Taylor has been perfect tonight. Seven of seven from the field and now three of three at the line. Can't do it too much better than that. his first miss and Knox has the rebound for Oregon State. Six point lead for California, 110 remaining in the half. Now California gonna extend that 1-3-1, one, one, maybe look to trap out of it a little bit. Well, they're very concerned with the guards of Oregon State now that Knox has made a few shots. Peyton now probably has to get it going a little bit. This time Knox steps in and almost lost the jump ball. All the many possessions. It's going to be Oregon State's ball. Well, you know what he was going to do? He was going to get it inside, penetrate, and kick it right to Peyton for a jumper. He just couldn't get the handle. There's the defense trying to extend. Now, what he wanted to do was penetrate there and then just kick it to Gary Peyton, who was on the right of the screen, just to go ahead and look for the shot. Yeah, in fact, we talked about that is the way the Beavers normally operate their offense. And frankly, they haven't done that very much tonight. They are confined to moving the ball around the perimeter, but yeah. not getting any penetration. California's done a nice job of controlling the outside guards and not falling into that trap. You're gonna get a foul, looks like, on Smith. His second personal foul. Still not a shooting, uh, it's only the sixth team foul, so they'll be shooting on the next one. And Gary Payton will inbound for the Beavers. He does for Knox, Knox surrounded. Now gets it back to Payton. And they trap Peyton in the corner, and he leaves it. Nice catch that time by Brantley, like a wide receiver. A great catch by Brantley. I mean, Brantley made a terrific save. It was about a four-second differential, so the shot clock's sitting about 24. Oregon State can be content to run it down. California should have a shot at a score. A little surprised. I thought they might look to score, put the pressure on since they are down six. Ball in the hands of Brantley, seven seconds, now six. Knox, tough shot, who nails it. Was it a tough shot? Oh, Peyton almost got a steal. And still trying, Leonard Taylor heaves it the length of the court. And that is the way the first half will end. So Oregon State scrambled back after trailing by as many as eight points. The Beavers have come back. Knox has scored 11, and he had the last seven for Oregon State. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? Four in a row, baby. Great job, buddy. Great job. He's won the nationwide season opener four times here. But that was then. 
Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. And we have a late entry, Mr. Quigley. Is he wearing running shoes? And they're off. It's Queen's Hurricane out front. But wait, it's going to be Quigley! What? I'm going to do it like this. The new lightweight midfoot strike sketchers go run. Tonight, the Mavs ride into Philly to battle the first place Sixers. Then, can the Suns dish the Lakers a loss in L.A.? Coverage of Maverick Sixers begins at 7.30 Eastern. Then, Suns Lakers at 10.30. Tonight on ESPN. Bitter rivals and a bracket buster turn up the heat on ESPN. First, two top 25ers take the court with NCAA tourney implications at stake. Waldo ducks it all. West Coast Conference stud St. Mary's meets superstar point guard Isaiah Cannon and Murray State. And to the basket. Ooh. Trey Burke and the Wolverines look to keep pace in the Big Ten title race when the six-ranked Buckeyes come to Ann Arbor. St. Mary's, Murray State at six, Ohio State, Michigan at nine. Tomorrow on ESPN. Shooters not only stocks the top name brand firearms, Shooters also carries top name brand accessories, including a large selection of name brand optics like Lupul, Nikon, Swarovski, Zeiss, Millet, Night Force, Trijicon, and many more in all price ranges. You name it, Shooters has it at the guaranteed best price. Scopes, rangefinders, binoculars, spotting scopes, and more. Shooters will mount and bore sight your scope free of charge with purchase of optic. Shooters firearms and accessories will not be undersold. At Ruby Tuesday, you know lunch can be relaxing. Come in and try our limited time lunch special for just $5.99. It starts with our made from scratch garlic cheese biscuits. Includes Ruby Tuesday's new endless salad bowl with a Christmas lettuce, our legendary croutons, and Parmesan cheese. And a choice of flavorful house-made soups like white bean chicken chili or broccoli cheddar. Come on in and enjoy our $5.99 lunch special while it lasts. Ruby Tuesday, your place at the end of the first 20 minutes then and as you can see california just simply shooting the lights out 84 percent and most of those have been inside roy fisher's four out of four and leonard taylor's seven out of seven so their front line really two-thirds of it's 11 out of 11. they've made some turnovers and but oregon state has stolen the ball and they've gotten some easy scores and quite frankly has rebounded a little bit better than i thought let's take a look at some of the individual numbers and you touched upon eric knox he scored the last we've been saying seven points it was the last eight points that Oregon State scored really a factor because the Bears were up by eight and now it's a three-point game and you can thank Eric Knox for that if you're an Oregon State fan and Alabedovic with six points and Brantley with six and really the one guy that's had a subpar half or as good a player as he is is uh, Gary Payton and that could be bad news for California Payton comes out and has a big second half yeah really the Beavers have not been able to penetrate as they usually do they have been content to shoot it from the perimeter and fortunately for them Eric Knox has knocked down three of four three-pointers individually for California the story is this Taylor and Fisher they are perfect from the field and not much help from anybody else uh, of course uh, Drew made a three-pointer Smith made some shots and uh, Matt Beezer their starting forward has not scored in the first half so Taylor cannot do it all by himself they're gonna have to pick it up from some of the other players the storyline in this one as we mentioned Eric Knox with 11 points but the last eight for the Beavers that got them back in the game they trail by three and the Beavers did force 10 turnovers and Dan Valwamini mentioned earlier he thinks that for the Beavers to really have a legitimate chance to win they got to get more like 25 to allow to continue that in the second half yes they will they got five quick turnovers but california really did solidify it for california taylor's had a lot of points he's gotten the ball around the hoop and he's been able to score and their whole front line has dominated california is going to have to get some help from their guards and they're going to really have to take care of the basketball if they don't turn it over they're definite to win this game uh, oregon state's going to have to hope for more turnovers the bears have had two baskets outside of 15 feet in this ball game That's that's it. And one of them was a Drew three-pointer, as I, as I recall. And the other one was by Leonard Taylor at the free throw line. Everything else has been inside the free throw line for California. And Gary Payton has really not been in the flow of the game as much as he usually is. He usually takes control of the game, and he hasn't done that so far. We start the second half. Bears with a basketball. Smith for Beezer. Smith, three or four shooting in the first half, too, but... Taylor and Fisher, 11 of 11. There's Taylor. First miss. And knocks with a rebound, so the Beavers with a chance to get right back in it to start the second half. Here's Gary Payton. 
for Knox. Gary Payton will not have two subpar halves in a row. That I can assure you. Here's Alabegovich, turnaround jumper. A little hard. Alabegovich not shooting it well. And Brantley got higher than everybody for the rebound and drew the foul. Alf Miller looking for 665 in the win column. I wonder if he remembers them all. No, he can't, can't remember them all. No, I don't think so. 665. He's, he's a, he, I'm sure he remembers a lot of them, though. Beezard incidentally picked up his third foul. We're talking about Gary Payton not being in the flow of this game so much. Matt Beezard not in it at all. He has no points and three fouls. Now they're going to send Brantley to the free throw. I thought he was in the act of shooting. It looked like to me he had it over his head. Beezard picks up his third, as you said, and Brantley will get a chance for a couple of free throws. Knocks the first one down. It's a two-point game. You know, it's amazing, though, when you win as many games as Ralph Miller has. Um, you know, a lot of times you have a tendency to remember the tough losses, which is too bad, but a lot of coaches do. You know, they remember the losses and sometimes don't get a chance to dwell on the positive. Ryan Drew just missed a gimme layup, but Leonard Taylor put it back and drew the foul and will go to the line for a three-point try, and Gary Payton was the man who fouled him. I thought California did an excellent job of just getting the ball up the floor. Smith, nice pass, and here's a shot that I'm sure Drew's going to be up happy with himself for missing that one. Leonard Taylor, though, anticipates his teammates miss, not a mate, and goes and gets it and puts it back in. And converts the three-point play. So the Bears do more than dodge a bullet. There's Peyton for Knox. Again. Crowd reacting every time Peyton touches the ball. Now Brantley, Peyton, three-point try. Too hard. No, he got the roll. <laughs> oh, he gave a little signal over to the, to the Rudy section. Did you see that? Yeah, Gary Peyton is not beyond whooping his, at his opponents. Bears turn it over. It'll be the Beavers' ball. Peyton's first three-pointer has got seven. Well, you know, if I were the, the opposing Rudy, so I don't think I'd get this guy upset. I mean, no, you don't Payton, want to do that. No, I, Peyton is the kind of player that he will take the challenge. There's another three-point try. Yeah. Boom. You, you don't want a nice looking at him again. Peyton is pumped up. I think the crowd might be well advised. I'd get on somebody else. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> pick on Alabegovich or somebody, but don't That's pick on Peyton. Peyton doesn't understand the language. You're not going to know it. <laughs> Peyton now with 10. Well, Peyton seems interested in this game now. Yeah, the two three-pointers have brought him back to life. Shot clock's down to nine. Ryan Drew, too hard off the left side. Rebound alive. Fisher can't get it. Bears still keep it alive, but it comes down to Alabegovich. Ahead it goes to Peyton. Two on two now. Here comes Peyton. Spins into the lane. Lost control for a moment. And will wait now. He's fouled. They say he traveled. He was hammered from behind. And Gary Payton does not like the call at all. And Tom Harrington gives him an evil eye. I, I don't ever, I don't think I can ever remember a player that's just taken about five steps on the court. Peyton thought he got fouled. Now watch it. In two, three, four, five. And there's no whistle yet. Now finally there's a whistle. He probably did get fouled. Actually, I think the travel was before all of that. There's Taylor. Swatted away by McIntosh, but McIntosh also swatted Taylor. I think Aaron Knox was reaching in, and he picked up the foul. Of course, that hurts. Uh, that's Knox's third personal foul. Knox is street shooter. A street shooter who's on a streak. Oh, and a little pushing going on between Peyton and Walton here, and they're going to have to break this up right now. Walton and Peyton just barking at each other. And a little pushing broke out. And the last thing in the world, as Leonard Taylor goes over to make peace, of course, I'd make peace with Leonard Taylor, too. I don't want him angry at me. Last thing in the world Oregon State needs is to lose Gary Payton. It's going to be interesting to see if they get him out of the game. Yep, they are. Well, that's a pretty good move by Ralph Miller. 
You know, if, if, if you've got somebody out there that's really too emotional, you're better off to get him out of the game. Now, Ralph's got a little counseling and guidance right now, and I'm sure he'll get him back in, but he's going to tell him, look, you got to keep your temper. And he's saying exactly what you said, Barry. We need you on the floor. Meanwhile, Taylor gets the free throw. Gary Payton's an emotional player, and he's not beyond woofing at an opponent. Very confident player. There's Martin. Now the Beavers are going to have to get something done without the guy who really runs the show. I think Knox has to look for it a little bit, especially with Peyton out of the game. Brantley inside to Alabekovich with a left hand. And now Peyton will come back in. Good move by Ralph Miller. It's far be it for me to compliment Ralph Miller yeah. on the move. I mean, he's, he, he probably knows what he's doing. What do you think? Yeah, I would say he probably does. One thing about Alabegovich, I like the fact that he doesn't get discouraged when he's one for six in the first half, and he comes right back out and shoots it. Matt Beezer, three-pointer. Big basket. Well, he needed that one. Has not scored the entire game. There's Martin for Brantley, now for Knox. Bradley, very poised player. He's just a sophomore. Remember the Pac-10 All-Freshman team last year. Kicked out of bounds by Beezer. It'll be the Beavers' ball. And now Gary Payton will come back in the ball game to the booze of the crowd. Eric Martin, or rather Earl Martin, sits down. And an errant pass that time, knocked out of bounds to Oregon State. Very lazy pass. They need to snap the ball. No sense just giving California an easy basket. Peyton and Knox have a little conversation. There's Peyton again. Cross court, it goes for Brantley. Now Gary Peyton. Peyton underneath to Alabegovich. Nice pass by Peyton, but Alabegovich couldn't get it down, and the Bears have the ball. Walton the rebound. That time Peyton did everything he could. Here's Beezer, comes across the paint, spin move with the right hand, travel. And we got a timeout. 15 52 remaining in the ballgame. Bears lead it by one. It's 44 43. Hi, Bo Riles here. And if, like me, you're one of the millions of Americans who suffer from hair loss, you may want to pay close attention because what you're about to see will blow you away. It's a scientific breakthrough called Miracle Hair, and it's a fast, easy, and affordable solution to hair loss. Miracle Hair works so fast, you can have the appearance of a full head of hair in just 60 seconds. That's right, 60 seconds, without the pain of hair transplant surgery or the embarrassment of ridiculous hair pieces. You know, there's so many things out on the market. I've tried them all, but knowing in 60 seconds that I can have a full head of hair, Miracle Hair is amazing. This product, I put a little on my hair, and it looks like my own hair. The secret to Miracle Hair is its smart fiber technology that uses all natural, statically charged hair-like fibers that seek out your actual hair follicles and bonds to them, filling in the thinning and balding areas. In about the same amount of time it takes you to brush your teeth, you can have the appearance of a full head of hair with Miracle Hair. And when you're done, Miracle Hair washes away easily with any ordinary shampoo. Miracle Hair comes in six different colors and works on all types of hair, providing a natural look that's virtually undetectable. Call now and get Miracle Hair for only $19.95. That's less than a dollar per application. And check this out. Be one of the first 500 to order. It will include these bonus gifts worth over $60 absolutely free. You'll get the revitalizing shampoo for even better results. The secure sealer to lock in the fibers. Three-way mirror for ease of use. And this handy application tool. Sold separately, the Miracle Hair Kit would cost nearly $100. But during this special TV offer, it's yours for just $19.95. When I saw the before and afters, I was blown away. I mean, literally blown away. To order Miracle Hair, call 1-800-229-4689. That's 1-800-229-4689. Or order online at buymiraclehair.com. Hey, man, you really think I had a chance to win this thing or what? Dude, you invented three catchphrases. 
get some toast because here comes the jam. That was brilliant. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Okay, everybody, we have a little announcement to make today. The Employee of the Month Award goes to our very own Doris. She does make a mean, sloppy joke. I mean, how hard is that? One-point game here in Berkeley. The home team, the Cal Bears, leading Oregon State 44-43. The lead has seesawed. And Gary Payton very much in the flow of the game. Saturday, more basketball here on ESPN. And an ACC matchup, Georgia Tech and North Carolina. That'll be at the Dean Dome. The Tar Heels, of course, number seven in the country. Here's Eric Knox, open for the three. Too hard. Rebound, Fisher. Walton at the other end. Matt Beasley. Now Smith. Taylor away from the basket. Walton across the paint, pulls up. Tough shot that time by Walton. Taylor went down hard, but he's okay. Here's Peyton. Cross court for Brantley. Now Knox. Gary Peyton again. Well, this zone has taken Peyton out of it a little bit because Oregon State not looking to penetrate and kick it off like they normally do, and they're just going side to side. And I'm sure California would love to see Peyton just passing the ball, which he's been doing. There's Peyton with a three-point try again. Too hard. The rebound control for the Beavers. Brantley back for Knox. Now Peyton again. He'll put it up. He got it. Three three-pointers in the second half for Gary Payton. He does look for it, though. All of a sudden, he's out of it. He's out of it. He shoots a three-pointer, misses, gets it back, and shoots another three-pointer and makes it. Plays with a lot of confidence. They got 0 for 4 in three-point tries in the first half. 3 yeah. for 4. And 3 for 4 in the second half. Yeah. Now, now, look at them defensively. Oregon State will try to lull you to sleep and then step in a passing lane as quick as they can. Smith, intercepted, turnover. Martin comes away with it for the Beavers, waits for help. There's Peyton again, now Knox, Brantley. Well, if you're going to stay in the zone, you better now extend on Peyton after he's made three out of four in the second half. Smith better not leave him. He should jump out too much, and he will take it by and take it to the basket. Now he goes inside, gives it up for Martin. Now that's what the Beavers usually do with their offense. Peyton again starts to the baseline, now kicks it way out for Knox. He was a very patient team, as we've mentioned. Here's Knox again, three-point try. See him look for the line, won't go, and the rebound controlled by the Beavers. Knox steps into the lane, gives it up to Brantley. Actually, had it knocked away to Brantley. Brantley with the right hand, too hard. Beasard has it for California. Good sequence, though, for Oregon State. A lot of good shots, and that's it. Just couldn't get anything down. Smith draws the foul on Brantley. Brantley pleads his case to Terry Christman to know that. There's with only one team foul here in the second half. That was the third of the Beavers. There's Leonard Taylor to the basket with the foul. He will go to the line. And Leonard Taylor has been a horse. 24 tonight. Mental mistake that time by Oregon State. They're in their defense. And no one was covering Leonard Taylor. They take the ball out of bounds, and I really don't think Oregon State was ready. Good pass by Beezer to trigger it, though, and get it right to Taylor. Taylor breaks the tie. The Bears lead by one. Now they're in that extended 1-3-1 one -one zone trap. Looks like maybe they'll trap on the sides a little bit. Here's Earl Martin. Knox. Peyton again. Brantley outside. Fisher jumps out on him. Martin in the corner. Three-point try. Peyton in and out. Nice rebound that, that time by McIntosh on the floor. Still scrambled for it. And this is going to be an alternating possession call to Oregon State. Peyton with a long-range jumper that time. But good effort by McIntosh to get on the ground and go after. When the ball's on the ground, dive on it, which he did. 
Morgan State out of bounds. Colton inbounds for Brantley. Yeah, you said it again. Not the way that time by Beezer with the Oregon State's ball. Alabegovich prepares to come back on for the Beavers and does. And McIntosh leads. So Colton will inbound again. Does this time for Eric Knox. Knox is trapped, leaves it for Brantley underneath to Martin. Nice ball movement by the Beavers. Sweet. Just a super pass that time. Quickness wins out again. One thing the Beavers do, they move very well without the basketball. And we got a good example of that right there. Brantley making a little move into the paint. Martin moving without it. Brantley made an acrobatic pass though that time to make the catch and just get the ball off. Ooh, he got away with a non-kick. Another turnover. Oh, and a fine block by Walton as Brantley was going in for the cripple. Clean block. I thought Brantley kicked the ball that time. Or maybe hit it with his hand. I thought he hit it with his leg. I don't think he realized that Walton was there. Just kind of nonchalanted that one up. Still another turnover, though. They have forced turnovers. 14 turnovers for the Bears. Knocks the three-pointer off the right side. Beezer might have gotten a hand on that ball. Here's Smith. Ralph Miller was not thrilled with that last shot. I mean, every shot's been on the perimeter. Another turnover for Oregon State. Bears tried to force that pass inside. Beavers are right there. I think they need to get a little penetration. They've lived with the three-point shot in the second half, and Peyton has made three of them, but they need to look and get it inside a little bit. Alabegovich puts it on the floor, takes it to the basket, misses another one. He's had some easy shots that have not gone. Those are shots that look like they should go, but, yeah, they're, just, yeah, but they're not going in. I think California needs to go back to take, take a look in there. I think they got to look for him. And he's been scoring at will inside. There's Fisher. Pops out of there. There's another near turnover. As Martin got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. And we're going to get a timeout with 11.03 remaining in the ball game. It's a one-point game. Oregon State leads the Bears by one. Hi, I'm Joe Theismann, and no matter what stadium I'd broadcast from, I would always have to find the closest bathroom, just in case I had that sudden urge to go. My prostate was giving me fits. But then I heard about Super Beta Prostate's nationwide million bottle giveaway, and I got a free bottle. What a difference it made. I don't have to go as often, and I don't have to get up at night as much. Now I wake up refreshed and ready to tackle anything. Super Beta Prostate has sold over 5 million bottles because 50% of men over 50 and 80% of men over 80 have prostate issues. Chances are you need Super Beta Prostate to keep you healthy too. What's so special about Super Beta Prostate? is that it's the most widely used supplement supporting a healthy prostate. It has a trusted 10-year history, and it's all natural, made from a scientific breakthrough plant sterol called beta-cytosterol. You have to take 100 saw palmetto capsules to get the same amount of beta-cytosterol as you would from just one Super Beta Prostate tablet. If you want a stronger urine flow and a more complete emptying of your bladder, I recommend Super Beta Prostate. Super Beta Prostate works. I couldn't sleep through the night. I found the Super Beta Prostate, which was announced over the radio. I got a free bottle, and now I'm sleeping all the way through the night. I am really happy. I sleep through the night. I don't have any sudden urges to go to the bathroom. Now I sleep through the night. I wake up completely energized, and my days are just great because of this product. There's no reason to accept the issues that come with an aging prostate. So get Super Beta Prostate today. It works for me both during the day and at night. My wife and I sleep a whole lot better, and we wake up feeling more refreshed and younger. Call now, and we'll send every new customer a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate. Just pay shipping and handling. Give Super Beta Prostate a try for free. Call 800-506-3612. 800-506-3612. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? Four in a row, baby. Great job, buddy. Great job. He's won the nationwide season opener four times here, but that was then. Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. 
The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. Well, Oregon State just continuing not to shoot the ball very well, and yet they are right in the middle of this ball game, trailing by only a point. In fact, leading by a point. Yeah, they're leading by a point, and of course, they're only shooting 33, 34%, but they have made three three-point shots. So, you know, a lot of guys would rather shoot 37% from the three-point range and 44, 45% from the two. So, Oregon State doing with their turnovers, and they're doing it with their long-range shooting. Cal's biggest lead has been eight. Oregon State's biggest lead has been six. We've had 11 lead changes. There's a three-point shot that was blocked by somebody. Taylor got a hand on it. Turn around, jump it and go, and here comes Gary Payton and the Beavers. He's dangerous in that situation. To the baseline, great pass. Brantley makes the basket. Well, you don't want Payton coming down the middle on you. That's one of the few times he's had a chance to. Taylor got by Alabama, which leaves it nicely for Beezer to the basket. One point game again. Alabama just took a gamble that time, and Taylor went right by him. If he was a half step quicker, he would have had that steal. The Beavers content to move the ball around the perimeter and not get much penetration. California's inviting them to throw the ball inside. They're not able to. Peyton missed another three-pointer, but Alabegovic follows it. So it's all going away of the Beavers. Alabegovic has come to life in the second half. Good rebound that time. Surprise, California. Saw Peyton trying to reach in from behind on Smith. It's going to force the Bears to make a substitution. They're going to bring Orton eventually into the game. And I'm sure that offensive rebound did not please Lou Campanelli. Now, Oregon State is out-rebounded by an average of 12 to 13 rebounds per game, yet they stayed in it from a rebounding standpoint against California. Well, Fisher controls the pass that was a little tall. Here's Fisher again. Turn around, jump over, and it won't go. But Taylor gets it back and puts it in. What a night Leonard Taylor is having. 27. Just powered him out inside. State has not died though. They're, they kind of hang in there and hang in there, and make a shot. There's Gary Payton again now for Eric Knox. Payton looking into Alabegovich, swings it around instead for Brantley. And they've run a lot of that 45 second clock. I mean, they're just staying in a half court. The shot clock's down to nine. You're going to have to get it up, guys. And Brantley will take it too hard. Missed everything. Beezer with the rebound. Can't even really call it a rebound. Keith Smith now calls out a set play for the Bears. Fisher comes out on a high post. Now they're looking high to low. They'd love to get the ball high and then low or shoot the jumper there. High to low is bigger. Taylor just knocks it down. He's knocked everything down from everywhere tonight. 29. Seemed like kind of an easy 29, too. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I don't know if there's an easy 29, but it looks like he can get 40 if this game just kind of prolonged a little bit. That is a season high for Leonard Taylor, and there's still seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Well, we've seen this before. Most of the night, Martin is hammered as he shot. Beezer undressed him. Maybe Beezer's fourth foul. And it may be after the shot. No, they're going to call it during the shot. His fourth personal foul, so Orkman will come in. Ryan Drew will come in for California. And Walton and Beezer leave for the Bears. Pretty tough night for Matt Beezer, who has had some very big nights. He's got five points all in the second half. But now with four fouls. And Earl Martin goes to the line. Martin, not a bad free throw shooter, 73%. And we're tied once again at 53. But well, getting back to Matt Beezer, he, he really has assumed a different role this year for California. Last year, he was an inside player. 
and really was a workhorse around the board. But this year, he's played outside because of Leonard Tate. He had to carry the scoring load last year, and he hasn't had to do that this year. He has five tonight, but Taylor with 29. We'll be back. Honey, wake up. You're snoring. It's really bad tonight. You need to go to the couch. Are you sick of being kicked out of your bedroom because you snore? Fed up with having to sleep on the couch every night? Then you need Pure Sleep, the number one selling snoring solution in the world. The first night he stopped snoring. The second night it worked, and the third night, and the fourth night, and I was about in tears because I was, it worked. Invented by a dentist who snored, Pure Sleep is FDA cleared and proven safe and effective. Here's how Pure Sleep works to stop snoring. During sleep, the muscles that keep the airway open relax, restricting airflow and creating a snoring sound. Pure Sleep is a comfortable, self-molded mouthpiece that holds your jaw slightly forward, opening the airway so that the snoring stops. Just look at these CT scans of a person who snores. Here, you can see the constricted airway. Now, look how Pure Sleep opens that airway to stop the snoring. Pure Sleep started working the very first night. It's small, it's comfortable. You don't even know you have it in. Don't be fooled by imitators that can't be adjusted. Made in the USA, only Pure Sleep has three adjustable positions. Plus, Pure Sleep custom molds to your teeth for a perfect fit. Pure Sleep is guaranteed to stop your snoring right away. To prove it, we'll let you try it for 30 days before you buy it. All you do is cover the shipping and handling. Plus, for a limited time, we'll give you a second Pure Sleep with travel case at no additional cost. So act now. It was just like our life's changed overnight. If we don't have the Pure Sleep, he's on the couch. So don't let snoring get you kicked to the couch. Kick snoring out of your bedroom with Pure Sleep. Call or visit TryPureSleep.com right now. Bitter rivals and a bracket buster turn up the heat on ESPN. First, two top 25ers take the court with NCAA tourney implications at stake. Waldo ducks it all. West Coast Conference at St. Mary's meets superstar point guard Isaiah Cannon and Murray State. And to the basket. Ooh, ooh. Trey Burke and the Wolverines look to keep pace in the Big Ten title race when the six-ranked Buckeyes come to Ann Arbor. St. Mary's, Murray State at six, Ohio State, Michigan at nine. Tomorrow on ESPN. with Dan Belwamini back at Harmon Arena in Berkeley, California, where the Oregon State Beavers cling to a one-point lead here against the hometown Cal Bears. And it's a very different philosophy that the Beavers are using, at least on the offensive end. Leonard Taylor, the entire reason the Bears are within one point. No one else in double figures for California. Taylor with 29. Of course, Roy Fisher had eight in the first half, has not scored in the second half, and no one else really close. And what a line for Taylor. 11 of 13 from the field, 7 of 8 at the free throw line, and he's added 10 rebounds to that total. 29 points, 10 boards. No secret where this is going if they could just execute in the half court. They'd love to get the ball of 44. Three points right. Ryan Drew knocks it. But... If you can't get it to 44, and someone else can make a three-pointer, go ahead and shoot it. And Ryan Drew can shoot that shot. No question about it. He's got six both on three-pointer. What a time for him to hit that one. Put he and Taylor on the same side. You got something going. Alabegovic on a high post. There's a three-point try. Gary Payton in and out. Won't go. And Taylor with a rebound. Good screen out that time by Taylor. He kept Alabegovic off and got the rebound. He did it all. So Peyton, after converting three three-pointers here in the second half, has now missed four three-pointers in the second half. Interestingly enough, Gary Peyton has had only two shots in the ball game that were not three-pointers. California trying to screen now as a travel. Mickey Mo, oh, well, we're gonna get him with a foul. Thought he might have walked first. on Brantley. We'll take another look at it. Smith with the pennant. Here's where I thought he might have picked up the foot right there. I think he did, but the foul may have occurred before. There's Keith Smith way outside.
And both teams really content to stay in the half court, run their offense. He knew California was. Now they're going to put Taylor and Drew on the same side, which I think might be a real smart play. Right there. Give it to Drew. Well, the other one is Smith. Look inside to Taylor. Now give it back up to Drew. Here he comes again. Put he and Taylor right. No, they're not going there. I want them to throw the ball to him, but they won't. Fisher comes outside, puts it on the floor, takes it to the basket, it won't go. Taylor fights for the rebound, Drew comes down with it, puts it up off the glass, it won't go. Rebound down to Brantley, ahead it goes to Peyton, one-on-one -on -one with Ryan Drew, protect with the body, foul before the shot, I think. <laughs> Oregon State so content to set it up in the half court that you don't realize what a good transition team they are. Their problem is they can't ever get the defensive rebounds to start the break, but once they do, Peyton's devastating in the open court. He's going to be a good pro. I mean, this guy, when you get the ball up and down and just roll it and play with a 24 second clock, just say, okay, we'll get it off. All you got to do is bring it down and get it to other players to score. He's going to be really in his advice. Jerry Celestine in the ball game now for Ralph Miller. Number 40. There's Knox for Celestine. He'll take the jumper. He's open for it. He buries it. Hardest thing to do in basketball. I think Celestine's been on the bench for what? 30, about 34 minutes, he comes in the game and makes a three-pointer, or makes a two-pointer. Almost a turnover, Ortman controls it for the Bears. Now he goes the right way, and a foul is going to be called on Ortman. And Knox is pumped up about that. Well, Knox tried to step in the way. Ortman was just running through the lane. And Eric Knox just stood there. Hartman Ortman ran over him. Matt Beezard is going to come back on for Ortman, playing with four fouls. There's four minutes, 43 seconds to go. Celestine leaves after coming <laughs> off the bench and knocking one in. Yeah, what did he play about? He played about, what, 30 seconds? Picked up a quick deuce and out of the game. Okay. Well, Coach, I did my job. You did. Play me more and I might get 40. The point-a-minute guy. In fact, he's a four-point-a-minute guy. There's a pass into Alabegovich, hammered by Fisher. Nice play by Roy Fisher. Alabegovich, a little bit of a one-handed player, I think, takes everything with the left hand. 4.20 remaining. Look at the scoreboard, and we're tied. Oregon State 56, California 56, and we'll be back. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? won the nationwide season opener four times here, but that was then. Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. Rated T for team. Download now and play for free at tank.tm. College Game Day storms into Ann Arbor, Michigan for one of the fiercest rivalries in sports. A homecoming trip to Ohio brought out the best in Bob Knight. See what lessons the general had for his boyhood school. Playing and, and going to school here was something that I always really appreciated. And Wolverines QB Denard Robinson leaves the Maze Rage student section to join the crew on set. ESPN College Game Day covered by State Farm. Saturday at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. on ESPN. Starting at 10 a.m. on ESPNU. Is your nonstick pan a sticking nightmare? Don't live in fear. The solution is here with Organic Kitchenware, the new nonstick cookware with revolutionary green ceramic coating. Now you can saute or fry with little or no grease or fat. Foods never stick, so you never scrub. Look how with just water, burnt fudge cleans up in a breeze. Don't worry about eggs sticking to the pan. They'll slide right out. Order your 9-inch Organic fry pan right now for just $19.99. If it ever dulls or damages, we'll replace it. Call or click right 
right this minute and get a complete bonus second set. Just pay separate processing. And we'll also send you a bonus $20 value surprise gift. You get two organic pans with recipe books, the surprise gift, and our lifetime warranty. A whopping $220 value all for just $19.99. And when you call, find out about free shipping. Call 1-800-240-4834, but hurry, you'll get a bonus organic pan and a $20 gift with today's orders. So call 1-800-240-4834. That's 1-800-240-4834. Tied at 56, 4 minutes and 20 seconds left. We're at Harmon Arena here in Berkeley on the California campus. Oregon State really doing a good job to stay in this ballgame. We talked about the keys to winning at the very beginning of this program, and we said Leonard Taylor has to score inside. Well, I think Taylor can rest his case. Yeah, Season he, high 29. He, he scored inside, outside. He's done everything uh, this evening. He's just had, I'm sure, his best game of the season. And the one guy that's really been quiet for Oregon State, when you really think about it, Derek Knox, who really came on to score a lot of points at the end of the first half, has not scored in the second half, and they need him. So I think Knox a key guy down the stretch. Taylor. Hammered as he went to the basket. No foul, but he made the basket. He's got 31. And the Bears lead by two. When they get the ball to Leonard Taylor, the ball's going in the hole. Oregon State trying to play up on the side of him or try to front him and not getting any weak side help and the ball's just going inside and Taylor just turning it in for easy baskets. Beavers meanwhile using the shot clock. Alabegovic forced that shot. Very bad shot. Ralph Miller incensed. My guess is that Alabegovic will be coming out. Yeah. That's you <laughs> you guess right. Next dead ball. Oh, what did it look at? They got Knox trying to guard Fisher inside. Fisher with about a three or four inch height advantage. Now they bring Taylor outside. Get it to Smith. Now Beezer. Beezer turn around in the lane. And the Bears lead by four. Crowd back into it here at Harmon. Cross court knocks to Martin. Martin starts on the baseline, knocked out of bounds by Drew. And McIntosh will come back on for Olivegaru. And the Beavers want a timeout. Ralph Miller will talk this one over. There are two minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Bears lead it by four. And right at the moment, Oregon State seems a little ragged. Yeah, right now, I think it's a key point in the game for Oregon State. Good timeout by Ralph Miller because they need to score coming out of this timeout. They can't afford to let the Bears have another possession because California has been able to get it exactly where they want it, and Taylor's just been able to score at will. Yes. So Oregon State's going to have to count it. Story of the game in two words, Leonard Taylor, 30 31 points. That is a career high, incidentally, for Leonard Taylor. He had 31 against Florida. It equals his career high. And that was back in 1986. There's a new breakthrough for men experiencing hair loss. Introducing the new Extreme Laser Comb from Hair Club. It's quick, easy, and affordable. And the Extreme Laser Comb is revolutionary. Here's how it works. DHT forms around the hair follicle, which shortens the lifespan of your hair. The Extreme Laser Comb combats hair loss, causing the hair follicle to grow thicker, stronger hair. This new technology is FDA cleared and clinically proven to work in 93% of candidates. Call now for more information and get this free info kit mailed to you in a discreet envelope. Hair Club is the largest hair restoration provider offering all proven hair loss solutions, non-surgical biomatrix process, hair transplants, hair therapies, and now the extreme laser comb. Hair Club is not about one tool. It's about all proven hair loss solutions. What separates us from all the other hair loss companies is that only Hair Club provides all the proven technologies and solutions for hair loss that are available. Imagine looking in the mirror and turning back time with more hair. Call now to see if you're a candidate. Call this number to get more information on the Extreme Laser Comb and all other proven options to get your hair back. Just look at these amazing results from Hair Club's many proven options. I found myself wearing hats all the time. And if someone out there has that same feeling, they need to go call Hair Club right now because it's changed my life completely. 
I'm very excited about my hair. He was a good looking guy before, but with his hair now, it's just this newfound confidence and there's a glow about him you just can't match. Hair Club provides customized hair loss solutions based on your age and type of hair loss. With locations nationwide, there's a Hair Club Center near you. What's important is how you feel about yourself and how you look. And if you want to look better and if you want to feel better about yourself, Hair Club is the way to go. I'd look in the back and I'd start seeing thinning and then it just kept falling out. Getting my hair back was the best thing that ever happened to me. Call for a free hair analysis and you could have more hair in as little as four weeks. Hair Club, America's hair loss experts since 1976. Call now for your free info kit and free hair analysis. Bitter rivals and a bracket buster turn up the heat on ESPN. First, two top 25ers take the court with NCAA tourney implications at stake. Waldo ducks it all. West Coast Conference stud St. Mary's meets superstar point guard Isaiah Cannon and Murray State. And to the basket. Ooh. Trey Burke and the Wolverines look to keep pace in the Big Ten title race when the six-ranked Buckeyes come to Ann Arbor. St. Mary's, Murray State at six, Ohio State, Michigan at nine, tomorrow on ESPN. Possession here for Oregon State. A trail by four. None bigger, Barry, in the whole game than this one right now. And underneath to Martin from Peyton. Now they kick it back out again. This time Peyton starts into the lane. Gives it up nicely to Brantley for the jumper. Got it. And that's what Gary Peyton does so well. And if the Beavers have not done, and I'm sure it's by design, but they have not done it tonight. Well, that's their penetration kickoff for the jumper, and they've been able to, uh, they've stayed away from that most of the evening. But Ralph Miller maybe tried to tell them at the timeout, we need to get back to the things we were doing well in other games, and they went ahead and did it and got the score. Look, look at, now, how can Knox guard Taylor inside? And they got a mismatch again. Me. He's just trying to front him and deny him the ball, and Taylor comes out and gets the ball. There's nobody else has been able to guard him. And Knox is really pushing him inside. He's got no other choice. He's trying to front him. There's Fisher back for Drew. Shot clock. Five seconds on the shot clock. And it's a turnover. And here's Gary Payton at the other end from Brantley to the basket. Tie game. Marvelous play by Brantley just to get his composure and make the play to, to Gary Payton. Good timeout by Ralph Miller. They came out with a score, two scores. And a grab foul underneath away from the ball against McIntosh. That's the sixth team foul. Not yet a shooting situation, but that's a foul that I'm sure Ralph Miller would rather see his team not take at this juncture. It was away from the ball. The California has to be very careful when they run their offense and execute, especially in their half court. They, they now need to get the ball into Taylor's hands, even if they have to overpass a few times. Fisher really has not scored in the second half after going four out of four in the first half. But California needs to be patient. And Taylor has to make himself available, especially when Knox is guarding him. You know, we talk about the value of Gary Payton. And we were talking earlier of turnovers in California with six turnovers in the second half. Oregon State has one turnover in the second half. Who do you suppose is responsible for that? Gary Payton takes care of the basketball. Well, because, you know, Barry, most of their turnovers result in easy scores. Now they're going to call a timeout. But you've got to be careful with Oregon State. They're looking to intercept now and step in a passing lane even more. One minute, one second remaining. We are tied at 60. Lou Campanelli will talk it over, and we'll be back right after this. Know what's even smarter than getting a smartphone? Selling your old phone at usell.com. All I did was go to usell.com, type in my phone, then answered a few simple questions like, is it working? Yes. Do you have accessories? Yes. And boom, bam, ha! I got tons of offers from tons of different companies. It's like having my own auctioneer fight for me online. $45, $50, $55, $59 sold. $59 cash for this. And newer phones, you can get up to $200. <laughs> 
Cha-ching! Who doesn't need cash? I know I do. Don't let this nice vest fool you. Usale.com gets you the best price with their max cash guarantee. You find a better price elsewhere, they'll pay you the difference. The thing is, you want to do it now, because these things lose their value every day. Usale.com will get you cash for a whole lot more, like tablets, cameras, gaming devices, MP3 players, and a whole lot more. Usale.com, the smart way to turn your old cell phone into cash to help you pay for your new phone. Quick search, more choice, more cash. Usale.com. I needed coverage that I could afford, so I called ICANN. When I lost my job, I needed health benefits from my family, so I called ICANN. With my history, I couldn't get health insurance, so I called ICANN. Going without health insurance? One call can change it all. Rates too high? You've been turned down. Or just need to save money? ICANN has plans to meet your needs, no matter your income. We have plans that include coverage for doctor visits, prescriptions, hospital stays, surgery, emergency room visits, and the list goes on. But wait, there's more. ICANN has programs that connect you with licensed doctors round the clock from wherever you are. And as a special bonus, if you call right now, we'll send you a no-cost, no-obligation Humana prescription drug savings card just for calling. That's a savings of up to 50% off your prescriptions at 54,000 participating pharmacies nationwide. So don't wait. Call ICANN right now. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? Four in a row, baby. Great job, buddy. Great job. He's won the nationwide season opener four times here, but that was then. Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. Well, there's the story of this one. Oregon State 60, California 60. We have one minute and one second remaining in the ballgame. The Bears will inbound with 18 seconds on the shot clock. So the Bears are going to have to be aware of that. Oregon State will not play Matt Beezer, who's inbounding the ball, and they will try to trap. The Bears get it into Drew. Now back to Smith. 15 Oregon, seconds. And Oregon State deciding to go man to man, come out right and get him, right, you know, come out and get him, see what they can do. Beezer guarded by Martin. They look in. Martin, or rather, Beezer took a bad shot that time. It's off the hands of Smith. It'll be the Beavers' ball with 47 seconds left. So you have to think now that they will work the clock down, just play to win this game. If not, they'll take it to OT. I think they're going to take a quick timeout, and I think you're exactly right, Barry, because especially when you're on the road, you might as well play it all the way down. Ill-advised shot, really, by California the last time down the floor. They were trying to get the ball around the basket, but I think you called it. They only had 18 seconds on the shot clock. Once they got it in, they could only make two or three passes and then look for the shot. Off-balance shot as it was. Two-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. 43 seconds left in the game. 41 seconds on the shot clock. And as we mentioned, the Beavers really with an innate ability to take care of the basketball. Real advantage now in the game is if you have good guards, which Oregon State does, and you have Peyton on the floor, he's going to take care of the ball, and it'll give them the ability to run it all the way down. They don't want to turn it over. They want to try to get a shot, and preferably take the shot with maybe five, four or five seconds to go, because don't forget, there's still going to be an extra two seconds for California to get it and come down and try to get some kind of a shot. But I think you're right. Oregon State does have to play for the last shot. You're tied. The worst thing you want to end up with is an overtime, the best thing is to win it. And one thing, of course, the Beavers do so well is to penetrate and kick it out, and they could draw a foul that way very easily, too. We talk about an ill-advised shot the last time down by the Bears. Here it is. I, th I think Beezer couldn't decide whether he wanted to pass it inside or take the shot, and he was off balance. And then Keith Smith tipped the ball out of bounds. Terry Crispin right on the call. And the Bears now, now will call a timeout. Luke Capanelli, now that he has seen the personnel that Ralph Miller will send out, will devise some kind of a scheme on the inbounds pass. This is where you really earn your money, is, uh, you know, the last minute. Both coaches now with the score of time. I'm sure Luke Campanelli is trying to tell his players, look, how are we going to play this? We're going to play it man to man. Who are we going to guard? I don't think they want to go for a foul. I'm sure of that. They want to play good position. 
Some great television coming your way on ESPN tomorrow. Not of the basketball nature, mind you, but of the tennis nature. The first major of the 1989 year, the Australian Open. It'll be the men's semifinal and the women's final tomorrow. Sukova and Graf, and it should be an interesting match. Sukova actually has the kind of game that could give Steffi Graf a little trouble, but Steffi Graf, I saw a quote of hers the other day say, anybody's going to have a tough time beating me. Yeah, I'm going with Steffi all the way. Yeah, I think so. And she doesn't say that in a boastful way either. She just means I'm playing pretty well, and you're going to have to play even better than I am to beat me. And there aren't a lot of people around who can play any better than Steffi Graf. That oh, shot you saw a moment ago, I don't mean to interrupt you, Dan, was mostly Gary Payton's family standing and cheering behind the Oregon State bench. So here we go. 38 seconds on the shot clock. And a reach-in foul. No, a kick, I think, is what we're going to call it. No, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Cal had a foul to use. Let's straighten it out here. They used it right there. Keith Smith leaning in. Still got another foul to use. Of course, they do have a couple of fouls, and I'm sure they'll try to use them. Shot clock is off now, and now it's only the game clock. So the Beavers will run the string out here, and will play for the one shot. And they're going to try to keep the ball certainly in the hands of Gary Payton. Here's Knox to Payton. Reach in again by Smith. And so that'll be the last foul that Cal can use, and the Beavers will still have 22 seconds left. An interesting philosophy if they don't go ahead and make those two fouls because they have fouls to take. I think California would have an opportunity to get the ball back because the shot differential, I think it was a two or three seconds shot differential. Of course, every time you make a foul, you get a reset of the 45. Now Oregon State can run it down and look to shoot it with about four or five seconds to go and then try to tip it in if they miss. 14, 13, 12. It's to Brantley, now to Payton. They're going to want to keep the ball in Payton's hands. They clear out. He takes it into the paint. Eight seconds, seven. Payton gives it up to McIntosh. He doesn't take it. Now they're going to have to hurry. And Knox forced the shot. And they got the Beavers out of their pattern, and we are going to go to overtime. That was just a moment of hesitation on the part of McIntosh. He just really, frankly, didn't know whether to shoot it or to give it up. And you won't see a Ralph Miller coach team squander an opportunity like that very often. Well, I think they got their penetration, except the ball went to the wrong person. McIntosh is not a good outside shooter, knows it. There's your penetration, except McIntosh is not the guy they want to shoot the ball. Now, by the time it goes to Knox, it's too late. California covers. And we got a timeout when we come back we will be going to overtime it's oregon state 60 and california 60. one woman one powerful savings tool one chance to hunt down the right insurance at the right price the name your price tool only from progressive ready aim save Forgot my phone. The Name Your Price tool. Now available on your phone. Get a free quote today. Bitter rivals and a bracket buster turn up the heat on ESPN. First, two top 25ers take the court with NCAA tourney implications at stake. Waldo ducks it all. West Coast Conference at St. Mary's meets superstar point guard Isaiah Cannon and Murray State. And... Trey Burke and the Wolverines look to keep pace in the Big Ten title race when the six-ranked Buckeyes come to Ann Arbor. St. Mary's, Murray State at 6, Ohio State, Michigan at 9, tomorrow on ESPN. NBA Friday Night Doubleheader. Coverage of Maverick Sixers begins at 7.30 Eastern. Then Suns Lakers at 10.30, tonight on ESPN. Is your nonstick pan a sticking nightmare? Don't live in fear. The solution is here with Organic Kitchenware, the new nonstick cookware with revolutionary green ceramic coating. Now you can saute or fry with little or no grease or fat. Foods never stick, so you never scrub. Look how with just water, burnt fudge cleans up in a breeze. Don't worry about eggs sticking to the pan. They'll slide right out. Order your 9-inch Organic fry pan right now for just $19.99. If it ever dulls or damages, we'll replace it. Call or click right Right this minute and get a complete bonus second set. Just pay separate processing. And we'll also send you a bonus $20 value surprise gift. You get two organic pans with recipe books, the surprise gift, and our lifetime warranty. A whopping $220 value all for just $19.99. And when you call, find out about free shipping. Call 1-800-240-4834. But hurry, you'll get a bonus organic pan and a $20 gift with today's orders. So call 1-800-240-4834. That's 1-800-240-4834. 
overtime. Now, California, incidentally, did not score the last three minutes and 12 seconds of regulation. And incidentally, too, one other note, as the Beavers walked out on the court, Gary Payton was right in McIntosh's ear saying, what are you doing out there? Shoot the basketball. I think McIntosh just felt he wasn't the guy that, you know, that's, he's not confident in that shot. Problem is, when you're in that situation, you don't have time to kick it off. I mean, the clock was running down. Go ahead and get it up there. So we start all over again. Here's Beezer for Drew. Off the foot that time of Brantley. Leonard Taylor runs it down. Shot clock. 12 seconds. Players are going to have to hurry. Here's Drew. They have to be aware of that. And look at Brantley play Drew tough. Here's Fisher for Beezer. Five seconds, and they lose it. And they really do collapse well when the ball goes down. They're starting to do that more in the, in, as the game goes on than they did early. And I think Eric Knox has done an outstanding job of defensing Leonard Taylor the last three or four times down the floor, giving up about four inches. California's not been able to get the ball to Taylor. And all he's trying to do is just to front him. I saw Corciani, Jimmy Valvano's fine sophomore guard, 6-1, playing up against Hammond at Georgia Tech. He denied him the ball. Hammond wound up with nine points on the day, and North Carolina State won it. So maybe borrowing the page out of that book. Use your quickness. This is one of his first shots he's taken in a long time. The result shows it. <laughs> it didn't really come very close. Ralph Miller up and yelling at his team. Well, the epitome of a street shooter is Eric Knox. You saw it in the first half when he made three or four in a row, but has not scored in the second half. It is 0 for, 0 for 5. We're trying to get the ball to Taylor, but Knox, number 15, look at him try to front, keep the ball away from Taylor. There's Taylor inside for Fisher. Kick it out for Smith. Starts the baseline. Got a man in the air. Took the shot a little short. McIntosh the rebound. Oregon State has accomplished what they wanted. Taylor has hurt them so much with 31 points. No one else is really close to double figures. Let's force the other guys to shoot the ball. That's what's happened, and the other people haven't been able to put it down. Two minutes into the overtime, nobody scored. We're still tied at 60. There's Gary Payton. Takes a look at the shot clock. It shows 23, now 22. Payton again, looks high, now gives it up for Brantley, back to Payton, three-pointer, got it. Nonchalant of that one through, didn't he? Uh, he's got the confidence to make the big shot in the clutch. He's had a subpar game, he's got 18, but he can play a lot better than this. This is not a typical Gary Payton game. Taylor has the open shot. He's a little short with it. The rebound to Brantley. Well, I think it's the defense. I think Knox, you know, he's known for an offensive guy, but he's done the job on Taylor. He really has. And it's really an interesting philosophy that Ralph Miller has used. Nobody else was getting it done. He figured may as well try that. Give him go that time. And now Peyton waits. Backs off a little bit. Leads for Brantley. Now Knox. Peyton again. Now Peyton backs in. Back to Brantley. They'll use the shot clock. 15 seconds. Peyton with penetration. Leaves it for Knox. Bounces it off his knee. It'll be the Bears' ball. Alabegovich comes on for McIntosh. Lou Campanelli. Shouting instructions to his team. a big possession that time by Oregon State to turn over and you don't see them make many that's not many they made in the second half as Lou Campanelli calls a timeout Bears just get it across the timeline then call a timeout 144 left in overtime Oregon State leads it by three on the Gary Payton three-pointer we'll be back Hi, I'm Joe Theismann, and no matter what stadium I'd broadcast from, I would always have to find the closest bathroom, just in case I had that sudden urge to go. My prostate was giving me fits. But then I heard about Super Beta Prostate's nationwide million bottle giveaway, and I got a free bottle. What a difference it made. I don't have to go as often, and I don't have to get up at night as much. Now I wake up refreshed and ready to tackle anything. Super Beta Prostate has sold over 5 million bottles because 50% of men over 50 and 80% of men over 80 have prostate issues. Chances are you need Super Beta Prostate to keep you healthy too. What's so special about Super Beta Prostate? is that it's the most widely used supplement supporting a healthy prostate. It has a trusted 10-year history, and it's all natural, made from a scientific breakthrough plant sterol called beta-cytosterol. 
You have to take 100 saw palmetto capsules to get the same amount of beta cytosterol as you would from just one super beta prostate tablet. If you want a stronger urine flow and a more complete emptying of your bladder, I recommend Super Beta Prostate. Super Beta Prostate works. I couldn't sleep through the night. I found the Super Beta Prostate, which was announced over the radio. I got a free bottle, and now I'm sleeping all the way through the night. I am really happy. I sleep through the night. I don't have any sudden urges to go to the bathroom. Now I sleep through the night. I wake up completely energized, and my days are just great because of this product. There's no reason to accept the issues that come with an aging prostate. So get Super Beta Prostate today. It works for me both during the day and at night. My wife and I sleep a whole lot better, and we wake up feeling more refreshed and younger. Call now, and we'll send every new customer a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate. Just pay shipping and handling. Give Super Beta Prostate a try for free. Call 800-506-3612. 800-506-3612. How did Tony make a name for himself at Daytona? Four in a row, baby. Great job, buddy. Great job. He's won the nationwide season opener four times here, but that was then. Now Danica Patrick looks to make her own statement in her first year as a NASCAR regular. This season, anyone can make a name on the biggest stage in racing. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona, Saturday, February 25th at noon Eastern on ESPN. Presented by GoDaddy.com. State still has a full complement of three timeouts remaining here. The Beavers lead it by three. 144 left in overtime. Bears inbound. Beezer for Smith. Interested to see if they still try to get the ball to Taylor with Knox guarding him. They haven't been able to do so. Fisher has trouble controlling it. Now they get it to Taylor to the basket. Once he gets the ball in his hands, it's over. Good pass in there, though. Just put it on the outside hand. Oregon State still with the lead. And man-to-man -man goes California, and that's Peyton's right in his element, man-to-man. -man. Smith's got a big defensive job on his hand. Nice pass that time by Martin, and Peyton cutting to the basket again, moving without the ball for the two. And you go man-to-man, -man, it's just going to open it up. Smith can't leave him. Gary Peyton with a quiet 20. And again, it's a three-point Beaver lead. A must-score possession. A good save. Payton made that play. Gary Payton made the play. Lou Campanelli wanted to travel. He wanted to walk. Drew fouls Payton. He asked him with 42 seconds left. The one thing Payton did was when he got the ball, it looked like it all in one motion. He tried to pass it. Take another look at it. See if you think this is a traveling call. Good effort, though, by Peyton to get down. You see what he did? He didn't really get possession. Smart play. He just went ahead and just pushed the ball off with his hands instead of getting it and rolling over. If he holds the ball and gains possession, it's going to be a trap. Never looked like he had possession of the ball. Yeah, I think it was a good call. And Luke Campanelli not happy with it at all. But I think the call was right. Campanelli now uses his last time out. Incidentally, Oregon State, we talked about the fact that Beavers were living and dying on a three-point shot. The simple fact is they've died with it. Only four of 13 in the second half. But nevertheless, they lead the ball game by three. Peyton's made every one. I mean, he's got all four. And he makes the big one when the score is tied to put him up three. He makes the first three of the of the overtime to put him up 63-60. And then, of course, he gets the see. So he's got all five in the overtime. He's going for seven. He's going to one-on-one -on -one situation right now. They always talk about the sign of a good team. Let's take a look at Gary Payton again. A good team is one that can beat you when they're not playing particularly well. And I guess you can make that case for a player like Gary Payton, too. Not having his best game, but he still makes the big play. Yes, he does. He makes the big shot. I don't really think he had possession of the ball there. It looked like he went on the ground, turned over, and slapped it with his hand. So that's why there was no walking call. But, you know, the real good players seem to come on in the key parts of the game. Peyton, who really has had a subpar game, has come to life in the overtime to make the critical shot, get the turnover, and give his team an opportunity to win the game. And what more can you ask from a guy than to give, you know, give your team a shot at it? And Gary Payton, having missed eight three-point shots, goes to the line, still having scored 20. 
He's not a great free throw shooter either. I mean, he's about a 68, 69% free throw shooter, but I would bet that in the last three minutes of a game, he's probably shooting at 85. Exactly. He gets both of those. 22 for Gary Payton. He's been the difference. And it's a five-point lead with 39 seconds. So the Bears have no choice but to throw up a quick three here. Beezer bounces out. Now he'll take it to the basket and is blocked from behind. Drew runs it down, but the Bears are running out of clock here. Fisher tries a three. It's short. Beezer gets it back, puts it off the glass, gets it back again. It's short. And Martin is called for the foul. Gary Payton had an incredulous look. He's saying they called a foul on me. Well, you can make fouls too, Gary. You're not perfect. I mean, everybody makes fouls. Luke Campanelli's still coaching, still 21 seconds to go. California with multiple shot attempts here. Beezer, good position, I thought, inside that time by Oregon State. Beezer keeps the ball up and goes in there and then makes the foul. Looked like the foul was on Martin. Yeah, it did. That was, if that foul was on Gary Payton, that was a real touch foul. He didn't even mess his hair. He goes, me? <laughs> Look, can't believe it. And Matt Beezer at the line for two. And with 21 seconds left, it will take a near miracle for the Bears, although they will likely foul and try to get the ball back. Still plenty of time. Beezer, this is the big free throw here. He needs to get this down. Now they need to go over press. Trying to take a page out of Oregon State's book by creating a turnover or a quick foul. Not a bad foul. And they put Brantley on the line. Oregon State not a great free throw shooting team. And in Brantley, a guy who shoots it at about 64%. That was Smith's fifth foul. So he will be done for the evening. And the Bears will hope that they are not done as Brantley goes to the line. 20 seconds left. They did a good job of making a quick foul with only one second elapsing, so. And of course, the danger there is drawing the intentional foul, and that was just a reach in. Time to do it is early. The Bears did that. One second ticked off the clock, and Bradley, 64% free throw shooter, goes to the line. Short. Rebound down to Fisher. Bears ain't dead yet. Got to think three-pointer all the way down, handle the basketball. And Walton ran that down, and I'm not sure he needed to. I think it was off one of the Beavers' hands. Typifies the whole evening for California, Oregon State, in a situation where you don't think they're going to come out and press. Instead, try to go back in their set defense, still put on the pressure, and force another turnover. And Walton comes away limping. He says, I'm okay, he'll stay out there. There are 11 seconds left. It's a three-point game. Beavers with the ball. I get the ball into Peyton's hand. There's the save. They throw it out of bounds. And Oregon State now smart timeout to run a solid out-of-bounds play and really try to get the ball in Gary Payton's hand this time, not to get the ball in someone else's hand because Oregon State, not a great free-throw shooting team, but Peyton, you know, is going to make the big shot at the end. California will go with Harrell off the bench just to give him a little bit more hands, a little bit more quickness. A little more speed to try to force a turnover where Oregon State, I'm sure Ralph Miller is going to be diagramming an out-of-bounds play. And one of the toughest things to do in basketball is after you call the timeout, it's late in the game, is the execution of getting the ball in bounds. It sounds simple, but many times it becomes very difficult where Luke Campanelli is, I'm sure, emphasizing to his players that we can't afford the luxury of waiting for anybody that we want to get the ball. The first guy that touches it, we want to go for it, not make it intentional. Stop the clock, put him to the line. Now, what would you do knowing that the ball will likely go into Gary Payton's hands? Do you try to trap Gary Payton and let the inbound, the man making the inbounds pass alone? Yeah, not a bad idea. If you, if, if you, you know, if you're California, I think the one person you don't want the ball to go to is Gary Payton. So forget the guy who's taking the ball out of bounds. Maybe look to double up so that Payton can't receive the ball. And anybody else you go for. And that appears to be exactly what the Bears will do as they play Harrell and Drew and leave Fisher as the man who will go to the ball. He'll chase, and the ball comes into Peyton and a foul by Drew on Peyton. And Peyton's so quick, though, that's what they wanted to do, and they just couldn't stop him from getting the ball. Good timeout by Ralph Miller. He wanted an intentional foul. Should he grab it? I don't think he did. 
No, I did, but you're planning to see. That's all. Exactly. Ralph well, knows that. And again, one second off the clock. He's been around. Yes, he has. <laughs> he knows that. Anybody who knows Naismith on a first name no, basis. He's been around, sure. So Gary Payton at the line. No problem. Not a bad overtime for Gary Payton. 23 for Payton. Has he scored? I think he has scored every point in the overtime. Has he not? I believe he has. Yeah, I think he's got all nine in the overtime. That's exactly what he has. He's got 24 in the day. Ryan Drew, the three-pointer. Didn't really get a good look at the basket that time. It's off of Beezer, and this one's going to be history. And a big win for the Beavers to come down here to Berkeley, which is a very, very difficult place, as we said at the beginning of this program, to play. That is a terrific victory for Ralph Miller, denying Lou Caponelli his 300th victory as a coach. And Gary Payton was the guy that, when it came time to get it done, got it done. For Dan Bellwomany, I'm Barry Tompkins, and we'll remind you once more that the final score in overtime, the Oregon State Beavers 69, the Cal Bears 64. Friday night fight. And tonight, we're at the Foxwoods Casino and Resort in Connecticut. In the main event, Charles Brewer, former super middleweight titleist, wants to stay in the championship mix. He'll face Scott Pemberton in the main event as he moves up in class. All right, we are set for the main event. Both men have made their way.